standing waves. So our goals for this session are to investigate standing waves and to talk about one application of standing waves. That's the physics of musical instruments. But first, we really need to talk about how waves or pulses reflect off the end of a string. And that's critical to understanding things like musical instruments, in fact. So what happens here is that when a wave encounters a fixed end, an end that cannot move, it comes back upside down. So you can see this in this animation. So the pulse goes down, and the right end of that string is fixed, it can't move. And what happens is the pulse comes back as a mirror image of how it went out. And that's somewhat different from what happens with a free end, because with a free end it comes back upright. And we'll see that in the animation here. Okay, so now it's the same pulse going up, but now the uh, end of the string is free to move. Note that it goes twice the amplitude. We'll figure out why. And that's really because of the constructive interference between half the wave coming back and the other half which is still going out. Okay, so when you have identical waves traveling in opposite directions in a medium, then the result is a standing wave. So the wave goes down on the string and it reflects and comes back and it's either inverted or not depending on what it reflects off and that interferes with the wave that's still coming down the string toward the end. Okay, so the equations for the individual waves are y1 is a sine kx minus omega t and y2 is a sine kx plus omega t. The only difference is with that sign, and that means the only difference is which way the waves travel. And so it turns out that the sum can be written like so, that y is 2a, you get double the amplitude, sine kx totally separate from cosine omega t. So you see the spatial part is now separated from the time part. And what that does for you is produce a standing wave. Okay. So there are times when the whole string is flat, that comes from the cos omega t piece, and there are positions which are always zero, or which have maximum amplitude, that's coming from the sine kx piece. So, note that this is not a traveling wave, and that's because the spatial part is separated from the time part. And as I just mentioned, the string is totally flat at certain inst instance in time, and there are certain positions where the amplitude is always zero because the sine kx piece and we call those the nodes where the amplitude is always zero and then we've got points halfway between them where the maximum is where sort of the amplitude is maximum and those are what are known as antinodes so nodes no displacement antinodes lots of displacement not all the time but more at those points than other points Okay, so well, let's back that up and see that thing move again. There we go again. Okay, so you can see that on this string there are three nodes and two antinodes if you see that thing oscillating. Okay, so standing waves, what about when we have a string fixed at both ends? Well, in this case, the wave traveling one direction reflects off the end, returns inverted, goes down, reflects off the other end, returns inverted, etc., etc. And so you get completely constructive interference only when the wavelength is related to the length of the string by this, when you get an integer number of half wavelengths fitting in the length of the string. N is an integer. And if we plug that into f is v over lambda, solve the original equation for lambda, where well you get lambda is 2L over N, then you get this as our lovely equation that produces the harmonics of the string. Fn is nv over 2l. v is a fixed parameter, depends on the string. l is fixed, n is an integer. Okay, so the lowest frequency here, the one that corresponds to n equals 1, is known as the fundamental, and all the higher frequencies, n is 2, n is 3, etc., 
are known as the harmonics. Okay, so what you get is, with the fundamental, the string vibrates back and forth between the red picture and the blue picture with a single antinode and nodes at either end. And there are times when the string is completely flat. Uh, the second harmonic, there's two bumps. The third harmonic, there's three bumps. And it's always oscillating between the red picture and the blue picture. Okay, so we'll see how this is built up. So here we have the wave traveling to the right, and the net wave on the string is shown at the bottom. And then this wave is going to hit the end, which is a fixed end, and it's going to come back upside down. And so this wave coming back upside down is going to interfere constructively with the wave. The upside down part of the wave is still moving to the right. And then that wave going left uh, gets flipped upside down and becomes the wave going right. And so you get this lovely constructive interference on the string and this big amplitude builds up. That's what we call a standing wave. Okay, so the, on the string itself, it looks like there's nothing traveling left or right. In fact, there's a way of traveling left and a way of traveling right, but they're identical, and so you get a standing wave. <clears throat> okay, so now we'll do the second harmonic, and in this case you get a full wavelength fitting in the length of the string. And you again get constructive interference. It'll be perfect when we get the uh, wave going left all the way down the left end. Now, okay. And so now you see three nodes, two antinodes, and a standing wave on the string formed from a wave going right and a wave going left. Okay, so here we see the fundamental, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic. So you should be able to look at a picture and figure out which harmonic you're looking at. Okay, now if you have... Um, strings fixed at both ends, then what you really hear when you play an instrument is a combination of the different harmonics as well as the fundamental. And because you're hearing multiples of the different harmonics, multiples of the fundamental frequency actually I should say, you get a really nice sound. A pure sound wave doesn't sound very nice. Uh, just a random mixture of frequencies doesn't sound very nice, but if you add in a bit of the fundamental, some of the second harmonic, some of the third harmonic, etc, etc, then you can actually build up some nice waves. Okay, so that's our introduction to standing waves. The end.